Hi there chaps, welcome back to the channel. So today we're talking everything Halo, all the news around Halo, how the games are being optimised for the Xbox Series X and S as of today, and what it is actually like to play Halo in 2020. Before we get into it though, if you do enjoy, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We do everything Battlefield and we're branching out into Halo a little bit now, so if they're your two games, then this could be the place for you. So optimization then. So Halo the Master Chief Collection, Halo 5, all the Halo games now are being optimised for the Xbox Series X and S. So what this basically means is now you'll be able to play all the Halo games in 120 frames per second and in 4K. However, that's all well and good, but I'm sure you're wondering, like I was, well, what's the community like around Halo? I mean, it's fantastic if they can give all these upgrades to us, but if there's no one actually playing the games, then what's the point? Now, I've been on PlayStation 4 for the last five years, and I have been dying to make a video on Halo. Halo was literally my childhood, and I haven't been able to get my hands on it for the last five years. So as soon as my Xbox Series X survived, the first thing I downloaded was Halo 5, followed by the Master Chief Collection, so Halo Reach, Halo, uh, Halo 2, etc. Now, I downloaded Halo 5 first because I thought, well, it's the newest title of the Halo franchise, so it's probably going to have the largest player base. Now, to my surprise, unfortunately, this was not the case. I tried to get into Big Team Battle on Halo 5, probably the most staple game mode of Halo, arguably, and it took me two, three, four minutes to find a lobby. Before that, I couldn't even get in a lobby. The matchmaking said it couldn't find any players for me. Now, there are players in some of the featured playlists typically in Halo 5, I found, but the Halo 5 player base is fairly low. Where this is not the case, though, is on Halo Anniversary, the Master Chief Collection. And specifically, I played Halo Reach because Halo Reach was my childhood. All I played was Halo Reach as a kid. As soon as that game came out in 2010, the amount of hours I put into Forge mode, custom games, multiplayer, it was crazy. And I was a bit nervous to come back to the game because I thought, well, I have such fond memories of Halo Reach as a child. Do I want to come back and potentially the game not live up to those expectations and memories? But this is where I was happily mistaken the game has really stood the test of time yes you can tell the graphics as you can see on screen now aren't up to date with modern games and all but the actual gameplay and the experience of playing halo rich has not changed and it's still just as fun today as it was back in 2010 and the player base is absolutely popping off i found lobbies of big team battle like that absolutely instantly i was in lobbies straight away and it was fantastic now admittedly sometimes i went into us lobbies but i was still finding a lot of players on halo reach still it was just a fantastic experience all around now even i was too young to experience uh halo ce i never got to uh have a go at the the overpowered magnum pistol that everybody talks about but you can do this in halo the master chief collection now and i managed to jump into a ce multiplayer uh game and that pistol absolutely rocks. I mean, it's crazy, crazy good. But it's great as a Halo fan to go back to Halos that I've never even played before because I was too young and I joined the franchise at Halo 3. Now, it does sound like I've been pooping on Halo 5 a little bit, but there are some really strong elements to Halo 5 as well around the community and specifically custom games. The custom game lobbies are really thriving. You can go into the browsers, you can find a whole host of games. I jumped into Fat Kid, if anybody remembers what Fat Kid was, the infection. If anybody that doesn't know, basically you're an, you're an infect, you have one infected who has an ex exceptionally large amount of health and then you have the survivors trying to kill him and escape through a maze to the end of the map before he catches up with them. If he kills one of them, they become infected but spawn in as like really fast, agile zombies that try and catch up with the, the, the remaining survivors. It brought back, again, so many memories, and that was on Halo 5, and that was great. And what I also like, is I remember in Halo Reach, when I was a kid, I used to jump into random lobbies, talk to some random person I just met, we'd hit it off, we'd go and make a party, and we'd go and jump into custom games or more multiplayer games, and we had the time of our lives. And that is still the same for Halo 5. No word, now, no word of a lie, I literally 
first game I jumped on on Halo 5, started talking to these two American chaps, hit it off, had a great laugh playing the game, joined a party with them, played for two hours of multiplayer, and it was yeah, it was it was like stepping back in time. It was exactly the same feeling I got of just meeting random people, jumping in custom games, jumping in multiplayer, getting in warthogs, getting in falcons. Oh, ah, oh, guys, guys, I cannot emphasize enough the point of. Halo is definitely worth another go in 2020. And if you've got the Microsoft or Xbox Game Pass, it's completely free for you to download Halo 5 and all of the Halos in, within the Master Chief Collection. So it is a pretty cheap endeavor to experience Halo 5 and the Halo Master Chief Collection in 2020. And in my mind, it's definitely, definitely worth it. However, that's about it for me. If you did enjoy please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out as a small content creator. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments about whether you're going to try Halo out in 2020 and your thoughts on the recent improvements to the frame rate and experience Halo in 4K. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks for listening, everybody, and peace out.